Warning, this podcast contains mostly Morgan. Hello everyone and welcome to the As Seen on TV podcast for The Walking Dead Season 6 Episode 4, Here's Not Here. I'm your host Cleo and with me I have John. I don't know where here is either. I know, I was so excited for this. Very good episode. Um, I think I what I really want to start off with is the title. Here's not here. That's something Morgan wrote on the walls of the house before he burned it down. Um, he wrote on the rocks around his weird little fortress. His clearing. His clearing. Muttered it to himself over and over again. What does it mean? He muttered a lot of things to himself, but Here's Not Here is the one that um, Eastman kind of shoots back at him. I don't know. <laughs> I think it's sort of referring to the fact that he's... Like, he doesn't feel like he's part of the world anymore. You know? Like, I, I, that's my only guess. I honestly couldn't figure it out for the life of me. I yeah. had no idea. And whereas, you know, uh, what was it? JSS, we ended up getting exactly what it means at the end of that episode. But yeah. Here's Not Here is sort of left to be like, what does it mean to you? Because I never really explained it. Because, like, is it like, <clears throat> is it almost as saying, like, you know, like, this isn't real? Or, or is it like, is it a, a sense of being out of touch with reality? Or, or I, I don't... I don't know. I don't, yeah. And I don't think there's an easy answer for it because it's something that comes out of him when he's in a state. We could no. call it a state. <laughs> Is it not a state? Oh, it's a state. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so it, it's coming out of... I think, it, I think it's something like a lot of this, the thing he writes out of, of, of him when he's stuck in, in whatever he, you know like the, the weird camera I which I love that camera effect by the way the like warping around you see world. me and Rob the whole time were like his sanity meter is dangerously low yeah <laughs> he needs laudanum now <laughs> is that is that amnesia yeah yeah <laughs> it's like laudanum wait hold on amnesia yeah. Yeah, no, definitely. And, uh, yeah, it's just kind of the, the sayings that come in his head that he starts monitoring when he's in, like, ETSD mode. Maybe he's, like, maybe that's when he sees, you know, his son, him losing his son. He's stuck in that. Maybe that's his desperate trying to pull himself out, like, I'm not watching my son die again. That's not what's hanging yeah, yeah, it could be. Yeah, it could be him trying to reconcile those trauma memories that keep coming back. Because yeah, I sat there for a long time, like, what does this one mean? I don't know. At least they explained what 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 he explained what clearing was. Yeah, like I go in a direction and everything dies. Yeah. Well, I also feel like clearing escalated from when we saw him do it with Rick. Yeah. Where, where then clearing was just get all the walkers out of the way. Mm -hmm. but, 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 like, as he left, it's like it became something else. Where he just kind of wanted he to be just alone. kills just everybody. Push, push push everything away. Yep. Everything do it until someone killed him. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was. I. It was interesting hearing him explain clearing. Well, I. Th I, th I think I like that part because he was like, "Yeah, I just kill everything until someone kills me." Mm -hmm. So that's what it is. Because he's definitely looking for death. He's out there looking for death. He's he's running right. Yeah. Walkers. Just... He's setting. He's setting fires. Many many fires. 
<laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't know. I don't know why he's starting so many fights. I don't think fires. I've been as shocked at a walker in a while, but that walker coming through the fire, I was just like, oh no. Oh my. Oh my, that one's going to hurt. <laughs> well, it's like, well, burn my biscuits, crack. <laughs> So Eastman. He he was my favorite, and then he wasn't because he's not here anymore. Freaking love him. Yeah. Eastman's awesome. And I was really, really hoping they wouldn't take the easy way out and just kill him. And they fucking did. And it pissed me off. <laughs> I mean... Well, it, it didn't. It didn't piss me off necessarily. Um, I just don't get to have nice things, is what they tell me. Right? That's what I. That's what I'm to understand you, from this you show. You don't. You actually don't. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, oh, sick a psychiatrist. I can relate to this motherfucker. But but what's her name? Oh. In this season, we've gotten two psychiatrists. Debbie, Laverne, Denise. whatever. De Denise. Jennifer, whatever the fuck her name is. I like her. I like Denise too, but she should stick to psych. <laughs> she does. She does not know Aikido. <laughs> no, she's, she's not an, an Aikido. There's a distinct lack of chill with Denise. <laughs> a distinct lack of calm. <laughs> Eastman had the calm that I enjoy, that I see in myself, and you know, I identified with him a lot. And then he got bit. So, that happened. Cool guy, though. Very, there was a little, I saw a little bit of Herschel in him, in how he buried all the walkers. Yeah, and, and took the there, time with to. With their names, and everything. Mm -hmm. um, it was very kind of him. Yeah. And I'm not, and, and I, I feel like. I don't want to say he didn't do it out of kindness, but it was sort of like honor, more honor. Than I think it was respect for life, yeah. really, you know, because yeah. if he says that all life is sacred, then, you know, even these things that are not alive, you know, they, they were still a person and they deserve yeah, they to be, once. they deserve to be recognized in some way. Mm -hmm. You know, because you never know, some survivors come stumbling across that grave site, they might actually see their loved ones you know, grave there and actually find some peace with that, which I actually really liked. Mm -hmm. So. And I assume they left the, the tin full of, uh, of ID cards. I guess so. Yeah. I, I guess that would be. It just seemed like that uh, table with all the tools was set up there and sort of left it. Yeah. I, I guess that would make sense. Cause if someone came by, I was like, Oh, this is uncle Jeff. I'm going to take his ID, you know? Yeah. But I mean, who knows what what happens outside of the people we see in this world? Uh, well, the four other ones we saw in this episode seem fairly nice. Two of them got killed right quick. Two of them got fucked up. Wow. Yeah. No, that was. It was hard to watch. It really was. It's like Mor um, Morgan. Put, could, uh, God. All right. Because those 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 two didn't seem armed, but they were sneaking up behind a dude. But, but they, they might have just been dead. sneaking around him. Huh? They might have just been trying to sneak around him because they saw he had a rifle. Like, That's true. That's true. <laughs> I don't think I'd go near the guy who's talking to himself with the fucking M4 in his hand. Yeah, really. I don't know if I would do that. Definitely not. Just gotta, gotta clear all the things here. It's not here. <laughs> Take a wide berth there, Jeff. Take a wide berth. Um, oh, pointless. pointless. Pointless, yes. Something about pointlessness. Um, yeah, no. It was just... It escalated from scrawling things in chalk on the wall to uh, just walker blood on yeah. rocks and trees. <sighs> He was a fucked up guy. Yeah. Uh, I mean, he was... 
not a fucked up. He just, you know, he lost it. it yeah, just kind of like Sasha did and Rick did, and the difference. Is else? I think the most important difference between all of them losing it is that Morgan's alone, so he's losing it. On alone. His own. There's nobody to pull him back. There's no one even to verify his reality for him. Like, yeah, exactly. at least people could have been like, Rick, you know, Lori's not there. Okay, okay, she's not there. She's not there. Right now it's like, the goat men are coming. <laughs> and there's no one to convince me otherwise. There was an actual goat, so he may not have He been. may not have been wrong. Tabitha was, like, ready to fucking brawl. Oh, Tabitha! Tabitha was, like, a total goat, though. Because so as soon as, like, the walker was gone, she's like, huh, grass. Bah. You know, the walker's coming. Bah. Bah. Oh, they're gone. I'm, I'm, okay, I'm going to go back to eating grass now. <laughs> I'm sitting there going, Tabitha, we need the assist. We need the, just, you know, head, <laughs> head, the teeth. head butt. I don't know. <laughs> there were three times when they came back from commercials that it was just a shot of Tabitha chewing grass. And I'm totally okay with that. Yeah, it was fucking great. And those empty goat eyes. Yeah. That seemed to know nothing of this world. Yes, but they're just so cute. Just so precious. I was sad to see her go, too. Yeah, I know. When he came back, I was like, oh, but Tabitha. <laughs> yeah, not much left for him. I, You know what? I think they had to kill Tabitha because Morgan would have felt bad and taken, him, taken her with him. No, that, that's what I thought, too, at the end of the episode. I was like, he would have been a wandering goat man if, if they hadn't killed Tabitha. Exactly, that would have been ugly. <laughs> um, I, I seriously want someone to have a pet and train it for battle. I think Tabitha could have been a decent battle goat. They talked about that on The Talking Dead. I oh, know. I think I missed that part. Yeah. Um, they were like, what animal would you bring? And oh, that's like, right, that's would right. You train, who would you have in the zombie apocalypse? Yeah, and, and what's his name? Said uh, Josh Gad. The, the monkey from Hangover. Yeah. <laughs> Thought about that too. I would want a falcon for the purposes of catching food. I don't know what I would want. Also, because hmm. less likely of a falcon getting chopped. Like anything that's ground bound is going to get, is it has a greater chance of getting So, can chopped. I take a phoenix? <laughs> It's the bird made of it fire. Chomped, it'll just come back. It's just fire. It'll it's just burn just fire. them. Fire bird. Yeah, I'll take a phoenix. I'll take Jean Grey while I'm at it. She can just psychic all of them to death. Mm. Mind bullets. Not, but, not literal phoenix, but okay. No, but hey. It's okay. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> Tabitha Rip. <laughs> we miss you so. I definitely like the, um, just the visual progression of Morgan's pointy stick that he murdered a dude with to his, you know, nice, polished, uh, curved, not curved, what is that, like, twisty? Gnarled. Gnarled Aikido staff. Yeah. Um, it's like I fixed your spear for you. Yeah, <laughs> and it, but it, like, I like that he was a carpenter because it was just not that it was actually his job, like you know, but it, he did a lot of did a lot of woodwork. He had yeah, he had you know all the tools and stuff set out, and he in when um. Morgan told Gabriel where he learned to use the bow staff. Did he ta did he say cheesemaker or he carpenter? He said cheesemaker. He did. Why did I think he said carpenter? Don't know. Because that's a perfectly accurate mishearing. Yeah, because we did say it was a carpenter. I think we even agreed upon that. Yeah, because I thought... Actually thought that he said cheesemaker, and then we both were like, "Oh no, he said." That's God. stupid. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. Both are true. Both are very true. That's really weird. <laughs> That's really weird. Anyway, we weren't wrong, Internet. He was desperately trying to make cheese. He finally he got it, it, I think. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, he finally got it. 
it's funny in the Talking Dead they uh they did a little, a little snippet in the like whatever. Oh, I saw um, yeah. Production and it was like they they kept putting like peppers and 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 vinegar in the cheese to give him the react get the reactions they wanted. Yeah, yeah. I mean, hey. Yeah. And that was actually the the person that they gave away the cheese to. That was actually the acting goat's cheese. So. Yeah. That was funny. Well, I think they well they didn't say whether it was her cheese on set, but the same people who brought the goat yeah. brought the cheese. Whose name was actually Rosemary. She was yeah. very nice. Yeah. So, I, I like that. He's like, I have worked with a goat before. <laughs> not the first time. Oh, have you? That's so funny. And they... That actor whose name I continuously forget. Um, John something. I don't know. Yeah. He's, he's got a three-part name. Yeah. Yeah, and something like that. The first, like, shot of him, I was like, oh, that's that dude. Thinking, you know, John Carroll Lynch. Yeah. Um, but then in the next couple scenes, I'm like, that doesn't look like him. That doesn't sound like... They just made him look different. I don't know what it was. The frumpy clothes? Maybe. <laughs> I mean, it, he he was such just so interesting, so very interesting. Like you know, the whole story of his family getting killed, and you know, which is a complete shock that it happened before the zombie apocalypse. Right. I mean, that was like terrible. I was like, oh I shit. Not see that one coming. No, no, not at all. That that actually really upset me. I think. Yeah. More than Glenn dying. Yeah. <laughs> Throw that in that quotes. Um, but yeah. Yeah, it no, that like, was like, Oh, fuck, wow. dude, I'm sorry. Because that's like, I mean, I, I mean, maybe because that's like my job. Yeah. But that's always like your worst fear yeah. in, in this field is like you get some psycho who hurts someone you love, you know? So it's You're like. like a superhero in that that regard a little bit spider-man <laughs> secret batman secret. who knows um yeah no definitely and i i just i think i even it was on my face i know but i think i may have even seen it on morgan's face too where it's just like i know how to say i'm sorry that your family got killed by a walker but jesus christ what do i say now it's like he just murdered them for fucking fun <laughs> Just to spite you. Ugh. You know, that's, that's absolutely terrible. But um, he murdered him back, kind of. Yeah, that was crazy. Yeah. Because um, he said that was his plan, you know, he'd lock him up and, and, and let him starve. And I had no idea that he'd actually done it. And that was like his last confession, really, mm -hmm. to Morgan. Yeah. And he said, after that moment, I realized it didn't make me feel any better. So, never does. No, it doesn't. Um, but I like to talk about uh, Morgan really holding on a little too fast to this, uh, this the Aikido uh, lines. And uh, we find out at the end that he's got that wolf. Locked up in the empty house with a... Is that a walker bite that he's got? Yeah. Because it didn't look like a bite. Yeah, it was a bite. Was he said he was shaking and he was sweaty, so he was getting sick. So, there's that. Well, I think... <clears throat> I mean, Morgan... Well, we, we did see him stumble with it, obviously, because, you know, when his when he had to go face his retribution of, you know, hey, it's that kid I strangled. Like, this is it. I could die now. And, <clears throat> you know, well, Eastman wouldn't let him because he's the right kind of dude, but he fucked up. But still, you know, so Morgan, I think, still isn't quite, you know, he's there, but, you know, he's still battling himself, I, I think, a lot. And and by doing this with the wolf, I think that was his attempt to kind of 
you know, for one thing, pass it along, but also, like, you know, show himself, like, I can teach others this. Like, I, I'm not, you know, I don't have to be alone with this sense of peace or whatever that I'm trying to maintain. Yeah. It seemed to work on Carol, at least a tiny little bit. Yeah. So. I think more with Carol, he imparted wisdom. Like, you don't like this. Changed her. Yeah, yeah. But at least something stuck. Yeah. The, you know. The, but but what I like about that is also something Carol said stuck with Morgan. I yes. Like that, it was, um, that was a back and forth. Because Morgan's got to snap out of it. Because... And they they did they they said it on and it makes perfect sense. Chris Hardwick said it on Talking Dead that Morgan seems like to have an an addict's personality, where he he is either all murder or no murder. Or he can't murder at all. Like it, there's no just a little bit of murder. Would it make a difference? What? I don't know if it would make a difference if, if he, he killed, killed people. I don't know. I don't know if it made much of a difference. People are going to die anyway. No, I mean, that's... You're hate to say right. it, but... <laughs> but... It, it's just how you go out, before, honestly. How it was working with Eastman, with uh, that code and stuff, <laughs> it's fine, because they were by themselves. Yeah, he was the first person he's seen. in an environment where if something went wrong, the casualty was one. Mm -hmm. But Morgan doesn't. Morgan's actually never been in a group. Like he's had no dealings with Rick. He was with his son for a while. He was with Eastman for a while. He's never been in a group. I don't know if he knows how to. How what he's doing will affect everyone. <sighs> I guess. Yeah. He doesn't know the repercussions of his actions at this point. Um, you know, as far as what happened with Rick at the at the motor at the in the motor home thing or, or whatever. But again, did it really matter? Because okay, the wolves might not have gotten to him, but the fucking horde of walkers would have. So completely. But the entire attack on yeah, Alexander. Yeah, that's a little bit of Aiden's. I, I know, I know, too, I know. So. But they got their. But again, own. again. This was going to happen, whether it was now or whether it was three weeks from now. It was going to happen. Like I, I, you know, I, I think we have to stop thinking that the, everyone's going to make it because they're not. Everyone's going to die eventually. Like that's just no, the way. I mean, that's life, but that's just the way this is. Like, okay, you don't die in episode six, but you're probably dead in episode twelve. Like, them's the breaks, you know. So I, I kind of get where Morgan is because it's like. I'm going to die, and everyone I love is going to die, but I want to go out knowing that I did the right thing. You know what I mean? Like, I want to go out with a clear conscience, and I don't think many of the, any, any, any other character can really say that. No. You know? But I also so I think it's noble. If, but I also think that if Morgan keeps going the way he's going, he's going to have regret. Because of things that end up happening. It's just what I what I think. I, I think I would agree with that. But, you know, he also... I think this important point with the wolf that he's interrogating right now is that, you know, how Eastman said, I've only ever met one person who was actually evil. Mm -hmm. And this is Morgan's realization. Yeah. Like, this person is evil. He's a sociopath. Like, and mm -hmm. probably like most of these wolves are. Maybe not most, but some of them are actually just evil. Um, yeah. And a little culty. We'll throw in I a mean, dash of... I mean, W's into their foreheads. A little, sure. a little culty. Because... I, I, well, because Rob and I were talking about this yesterday. I was like, are they like just like end of the world cult? Like, nothing matters. All life is meaningless. Cull the land. You know, that kind of shit. Or, like, are no. they summoning our Dark Lord, Cthulhu? Or... <laughs> No, I don't think they have any, like, thoughts like that. I think it's just like, yes, this is the end of the world. Let's just be primal. I mean, that's what this right. is. Right. The way they run around, how they use their weapons, really feels like they are a pack of wolves. Like that episode um, 
of them invading Alexandria was looked like a pack of wolves. I freaking love that about well, you know the blocking and everything. But this is the thing: the guy that Morgan was talking to was different because all those other wolves showed fear. Yeah. He never did. This guy never fucking cared. He does not care. The rest of them... Except for the guy with the axe. Uh, yeah, all right, yeah, 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 I'll give you that. But for the most part, they were scared. They were scared when they were alone. They yeah, were terrified, because, like, guns are hard to deal with, you know? But what I'm saying is that this guy is different. Like, maybe one of those other wolves, maybe he could have talked some sense into and maybe rehabilitated I don't know. But this guy, no. Like, this is your evil one. Like, he's... You can't... There's just some people you can't fix. Mm -hmm. And... I use that term fix loosely, but... You know, in that case, you can't rehabilitate him. He's... He is what he is. And it's... And I wonder how he's gonna use, like... The lesson of... Eastman dealt with this evil guy who ended up getting away and murdered his family. You know, I wonder how he's gonna... Well, look what he just did. He locked him in a cell, just like Eastman did. So... Yeah. So I guess there's that. Yeah. <laughs> it yeah. might not be the end of the world. But, I mean, honestly, he's gonna turn, and he's just gonna bap him in the head as a walker. Yeah. And bury his ass. And pull off his shitty teeth. Because they bother me. The worst. The like, worst you can teeth. tell they just, like, put film over it. <laughs> yeah. They just took a gusher, just... Yeah. Which also gets me, because... Well, I guess in Alexandria, they they brush their teeth. But even Rick's group, when they were out in the middle of nowhere, definitely not brushing their teeth. Still had better teeth. teeth. Still looked good. <laughs> it's like, there's <clears throat> some correlation in, like, fiction between bad teeth and, and bad guy. Correct. That is absolutely correct. Bad guy, hardcore halitosis. Like, it just, the worst. It doesn't make any sense. But, I don't know, maybe they had some floss in Judith's baby bag. They were keeping clean. Who knows? They, they took along with the baby food. Yeah, the Listerine or whatever. And the, yeah. You know, just <laughs> passing that around. Don't drink it. <laughs> It's not, it's not a substitute. Carlos is not the time. Oh, it's not a substitute for... Blue Curacao. For Curacao, that's it. <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah, I mean, it was... I, I, I think also the way this, this was timed is good, because it was a nice break from like, oh, hey, Glenn's dead. Definitely. Uh, <laughs> definitely a break from... Because... So many things happened in the last two episodes that it's Plus, like, oh my god. Since the season over. began, since episode one, we've just been like... That's true. Episode one pretty much right in it. Yeah, we've been like fucking on a... We've been on a bullet train for three episodes. I think it was a nice change of pace to slow things down because they didn't... It, I, I don't even, I, I'm really glad they did because I don't think I would have been able to keep up if they kept fucking just pounding ahead with this plot line. I agree. I would have needed a break. I don't think I would have been able to watch it this week. I would have just been like, you know what? I gotta fucking take a You know what? My, um, I need an emotional break. I need a pause. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so much is happening and so many people are getting killed. It's just like, alright, yeah. good. We just had a, basically a two-man show. Yeah, they fucking lost like 90% of their, you know, raiding party. Yeah. One of them's got a bullet in his leg. So yeah, yeah, that's right. And the one that one of the ones that survives has a bullet in his leg. So thanks to another dipshit. Yep. Um, yeah. So things haven't been good, and it was nice to kind of get an idea of how Morgan is the way he is. Yeah, and I definitely think with all the mystery with Morgan last season, having him come in this season. Giving us a like, he got to wait a little bit longer and then finding out. I also did not expect the Zen Master to look, uh, you know, like, like a chubby middle aged. Just like a dude. dumpy <laughs> white dad. Yeah. Definitely not. Yeah. Uh, what I pictured. No, I'm thinking like, you know, this, this guy in like a monk's robe, you know, sitting yeah. on top of a mountain. 
still bald. So they got that. But, like, it was really funny because he walked on screen. I think he was in, like, a bathroom. And then yeah. it's like, is that the, really? He's in a, yeah, okay. All right. <laughs> He's just out for his morning shit. I mean. Could you put that gun away, please? Please? All right. Bap. Yeah, I, I absolutely loved it on because he was just like, please don't. Oh, I warned you that, okay, bonk. <laughs> He's just a, he just goes around bapping people. Just bap. He does. Which is now what Morgan does. Goes, just, he just goes around bapping people. Yep. He said, I'm like, Morgan, you're going to get bapped. Bap. You're going to get bapped. Um, oh, there was something. Oh, um, the, the candy. Whoa. Ho ho's? No. Ho ho's? Roll, roll. Ah! Roll clusters. Lanes. Oh, Something clusters. clusters. Yeah, yeah. Boo boo clusters. Whatever. It's not, that's not what it is. Uh, but that snack, actually, in The Walking Dead, it's Talking Dead, they said that that is what Morgan left on the altar at Gabriel's church. No kidding. Yeah. So he left. Oh, that's very sweet. For Eastman. Which, when I read that, and it wasn't even something that anyone said in an interview. It was just like, hey, little fun fact. And usually those fun facts are like, yeah, okay, I get it. But that one, I was like, no! Oh. I am sad now. That is sad. Oh, man. Yeah. But this, this just goes to show how long the writers have been sitting on this. Yeah. So they've known, at least loosely, the story of Eastman. Mm-hmm. And he was a really well thought out character. I think there was one point in the Talking Dead that they even mentioned, like, you know, that shirt was from a bar that was closing down. He doesn't just fucking care about turtles. Yeah. You know. Which, which Chris Hardwick is like, I like that there's a turtle shirt uh, two episodes after a turtle got eaten. No, but yeah, they, they really gave this guy, like, he had a life and they wanted to show you that. And I really enjoyed that. You know, like that piece of plaster on the wall that was just like, the fuck, like... I was confused because I thought it was a, a, like a slab of clay, like <coughs> stone slab or something, and then it was just dry, it was drywall. It's like, oh, got it. Yep. Oh, he got so mad. Like, I think that was the only time you really saw anger on yeah. his face. <laughs> He's just looking at Morgan. It's like, oh, you purr. Son of a bitch. I'm going to bap you in the head. <laughs> the shit I went through for this? Bap. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I think... We really saw Morgan kind of relapse in this episode when they go back to the, his little camp thing. Yeah, he, yeah. He's, he started saying, kill me again, kill me, you know. And I'm just hoping that whatever goes forward, he's not going to start asking Rick to kill him again. I think that he's been along, he's been out for a long time. Yeah. He's had a lot of practice to be this way. Mm -hmm. He's had a lot of time for these habits to set in. It would take a lot to get him back there. Yeah. I think he'll be okay, honestly. I think that he's going to have to answer for the not killing, sure, yes, in agree. some regard. Because people are going to start to notice, like, hey, man, like, fucking, those guys jump me. <laughs> you know them? You know, so, yeah. I don't know. I, I, I just, I'm curious to see what happens next. Because obviously people are going to start, you know, there's an, Maggie's going to go start looking for Glenn immediately. And I'm sure she's yeah, going to want, I, and people are going to want to go with her. Because they don't want her to go alone. So, maybe he'll be like, hey man, did you ever hear of like, chill? Because like, check this shit out. Read this book. Did you ever hear of chill? Here, ser seriously, I have pamphlets, flyers, whatever you need. I have a stick. I have a spare stick. Do you want to be stick buddies? Morgan walks around the zombie apocalypse handing out chill flyers. Yeah. <laughs> the art of the chill. chill. <laughs> um, okay, so next, speaking of uh, Maggie, next week's episode is called Now. And I couldn't find an official synopsis or whatever. Uh, sure. So Can we make one up? Yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, the group is upset. The zombies are here. Shit. 
it's about the right caliber. Yeah. If it's a little too long, though, I think you might want to cut that down to a fragment of a set. Okay. Ah, zombies! <laughs> There you go. Um, but in the in the preview video, um, we hear Michonne going, saying what happened. Maggie wants to go after him. Deanna does not look like she's doing well at all. Ah, yes, <laughs> she's the just, words. She's just she's standing on the top of the wall like the words of the former. They must <laughs> caress. What? <laughs> Peons, how dare you speak? <laughs> She's got the um, the voice of the narrator from Darkest Dungeon going through her head over and over again. Words scrawled on metal. These are the things that will haunt me. Yeah, exactly like that. I'm actually the narrator. No one knew that, but it's me. <laughs> Surprise. Where do you think you made all this money from? Surprise, motherfucker. Not from the streets. <laughs> uh, yeah. So that's, that's that. And then, uh, man, in terms of, of Glenn's fate, because I, I thought a lot about this because it upset me in a different way, but sometimes a little, a little more, it upset me that, that I was wrong in my assumption that he had died there. <sighs> okay. No, yeah. No, oh, 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 I'm sorry. It's. I don't know how I feel about it is really what I mean. Yeah. A lot of feelings that I can't ha put words to. Well, I think there's a bit of frustration because it's like, you motherfuckers made me think, you, you made me think he was dead. That's, that's probably exactly it. You know, I think that's, that's probably at least part of it. It's just mm -hmm. frustration and sadness and yeah. just that wonder. And now we have to sit and wonder. Yeah. For a while, like, what the fuck happened to Glenn? Is Maggie going to stumble into him, or is he going to be a walker when she finds him? Like, And I... I don't know. I have come around, like, it's it's been a week, so, you know, there's been some... Healing. Some time has passed. Um, but I do think he survived the initial fall into the horde of zombies. Um, but I'm not sure how far he's going to make it from there. Because the more I think about it, the more I come back to what Scott Gimple wrote for Chris Hardwick to read on The Talking Dead last week. Where it was, in some way we will see Glenn and, uh, and it'll help complete his story. Yes. And, it more, and part of the feelings I can't describe is that him being alive might be worse. <laughs> it might be worse. Because he's probably not going to make it home. Yeah. So. I'm getting upset now. <laughs> okay, she I'm sorry. Alright. Let's... <laughs> I just needed to say it because... Oh, um... The thing that's been buzzing on... The internet is they've taken Stephen Yen's name off of the credits. Was the whole reason I wanted to bring He's it up. He's still been seen on set. This is true. And I'm also, not they. That, that is proof well, of anything. Because they took Carol's name out when she was yeah. exiled. You know. I just wanted. It was news. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm I'm pretty sure they're bringing him back in some, some capacity. We're going to see him again. Completely agree. They even said, like, Scott Kimball said, you're going to see him in some way, shape, or form. Can't tell you what, but don't get mad. <laughs> Spoilers. <laughs> Can't tell you what. <laughs> Just don't be mad at Just us. Just don't be too mad. Late, Scott. It's too late for that. Fucked up. <laughs> you fucked up. <laughs> I still think last episode, instead of thank you, should have been named fuck you. <laughs> Just my opinion. This could have been called Here's Not Glenn. <laughs> for an hour and a half. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, John, where do the people find you? You can find me in more witty quips at No More No More on Twitter. <laughs> and you can find me trying to deal with Glenn uh, at Cleomoto on the socials and on Twitch at the Cleomoto. I probably won't be dealing with Glenn on Twitch, but you, you know, if you want to go follow me or whatever. 
You can find all of us at ASO TV Podcast on Facebook, Twitter, Gmail, Google+, and right here on YouTube. Follow us for some more podcasts from some of your favorite TV shows. Until next week when we may or may not get any closure ever. Bye. Bye, I guess. John is so done with my shit. <laughs> it's not true. I'm just done with the Walking Dead shit.